So you finished up your homeschool year and maybe you dealt with all of the mess that was in that space beforehand or maybe you just closed the doors and left it for another day. And now it's time to deal with that mess and to set up your space for next year. Well, today I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide and tips and tricks that you can use to help you set up that new space for success. So let's get started. First up, if you were homeschooling last year, packing away last year's curriculum and supplies is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to take everything out and down a little bit at a time or all at once, depending on your personal organizational style, but we're going to go through all of the curriculum. And the first thing we're gonna do is take out samples of the work that our child completed and put it in a homeschool portfolio. If you are not familiar with homeschool portfolios or how to set them up, I will leave a link down in the description that outlines exactly how you can set your son up for yourself. But this allows you to be able to take out samples of the work and pitch the rest when it comes to consumable workbooks. When it comes to your curriculum that maybe can be reused, you're going to want to sit down and evaluate that curriculum. As part of going through all of the curriculum, you're going to want to think about, is this something I'm going to keep for future kids? Keep in mind, if there are large age gaps between your children, you may want to go ahead and pass it on and let it be a blessing to another person in your community, in your church, in your co-op, letting them have that opportunity to use that curriculum, knowing that if you need it in the future, God will provide it, as well as understanding that additions change and you may or may not be able to get the consumables for that if you hold on to it for seven plus years. However, if you have a child that's coming up fairly soon or maybe the curriculum was a bigger investment and you want to keep it, then this is the time that you're going to take it away from your school space and pack it somewhere safely. For me, this is in my couches. I have couches from Home Reserve. No, this is not an ad for them, but um, Home Reserve has couches that has built-in storage. So my used curriculum goes in there. And if I have too much that the couches can't shut, it means that I need to get rid of some of the things that I currently have. After we've taken that critical look of what we've used in the past and we've given away, donated, stored, or pulled out for the portfolio, anything that's needed, our next step is to find a designated spot to put new curriculum that is coming in. Now you might be saying, Katie, isn't that kind of backwards? Should we figure out where we're gonna put this new curriculum and like have the organizational system set up first? The answer is no, because because typically we are ordering curriculum and it kind of comes in in pieces. And if for us, especially with a family of six kids, there can be a lot of curriculum and it can kind of overtake your space. I know for me, if I don't have a designated space, it ends up in my bedroom at the foot of my bed, taking over my room. Okay. So for this, you're going to find a designated spot. It could be a place on the bookshelf, especially if you cleared off some of your old curriculum. Maybe you can put some there. Maybe it will be a box that's in your bedroom or a corner in your living room, wherever it is. The idea is to have one designated spot so that you don't lose things or accidentally reorder things you've already ordered. And it will help you be ready when you're ready to actually put your supplies away to know exactly where everything's at. Now that we've done this, it's time to consider your needs for next year. Believe it or not, homeschool spaces are constantly changing. Whether you have a dedicated room or a corner in your living room, it's important to note the needs of your students this year. And what does your space need to look and feel like to be functional for your family? So for instance, in the past, we have had times where I have stored all of the kids homeschool curriculum together by subject. So here's everybody's history things or everybody's science things. Other years, I have stored it by child. So for many years, we actually used rainbow carts and each child had their own cart and then each drawer was a subject for that child. And that worked out really well. It was broken up such that my little kids could follow the system. We put pictures on the front of the cart. You can see a video down below that explains better how I organize those, but we would set up the system and it worked beautifully. Now that my kids are older, they don't need the cart system. And we went to cubbies this past year where they each had their own cubby for their own supplies. But now we're moving into another season. As I get to ready to have high schoolers and I have older middle schoolers and many of them are wanting to store their books in their own room. And they are finally at the age where I actually will let them do that because they're responsible enough to be able to keep track of them. So I'm only going to need cubbies for a few of my kiddos and the other ones are already have space in the room. So just consider what has changed as far as what space you need for your kids. Also consider changes in your curriculum choices. So for instance, my youngest two are being homeschooled by one of my dear friends, Wendy over from homeschool with Plan Prep Pray. And with her, they're using CLE, Christian Light Education. This curriculum is really neat, but one of the things about it that makes it unique and different is that it actually comes in little light units, so little workbooks. So an entire year's worth of curriculum is broken up usually into 10 workbooks per subject. 
Now this is great because your kids get a sense of accomplishment and they get excited when they get to move into a new book and it makes them easier for them to transport and to move around. But this means that I end up with a lot of light units for these two little girls. So because of that, I had to consider this year, where was I going to store all of these books? versus in past years where they might just have one big workbook or maybe they didn't have any workbooks at all and had more readers. So consider those factors when thinking about your space. Next, we're gonna gather any needed supplies when it comes to organizing your space. So maybe these are bins, baskets, containers. Now I would encourage you to shop around your own home first. I know it can be fun to get all of the new fancy supplies, but oftentimes you probably have something that you've bought in the past that could be used better right now for the future. So consider what you already have and then carefully select and make intentional purchases for the other things that you need for your homeschool space. It might be a homeschool cart that you wanna have and add to your homeschool home. Maybe it is different basket or bookshelf. Again, every year has been a little bit different and by making these investments a little bit at a time, it has made it a lot more doable. When we started out with that initial cart system, I didn't buy six carts at one time. I bought two and we split them. Five drawers were for one kid, five drawers were for the next kid. And then as they got older and they had more supplies, we built on until we had six carts total. So finally, after doing all of those things, we are ready to start placing the curriculum in the spot that you want it. You can do this by thinking again, what do you want to, how do you want to organize it? Do you want to organize it by child or by subject? Labeling this so that your family can follow the same system that you have and training them and where things go. This is going to be the make or break moment between whether this system is actually going to be functional and work for your home or not. Have your kids input and feedback on what is most helpful. I have actually found that our group subjects are best kept in the living room because those are that's the space that we do those group subjects. Whereas individual subjects go in our school area, which is just a wall in our kind of breakfast nook section. Take into consideration what you are going to need on a daily basis, a weekly basis, or a monthly basis. The less often you need to utilize it, the higher up you can put it, or maybe the more put away you can put it. So if you have a closet, you can put something that you're not going to access on a daily basis behind that door. However, it's something you're going to access all the time. You may want it on a bookshelf or somewhere that's a little bit closer, a basket or a shelf that's easier to grab and go. If you want some inspiration to help you with your organization, you can check out the carts video that I did here, figuring out how we organize things by carts. And you can check out last year's homeschool room tour. Be sure to subscribe because I will be coming out with this year's homeschool tour as I take into account many of the different factors I've mentioned in this video, as well as others that I am still figuring out during this time.